Hey guys, it's Surgeon here, and welcome to my Nightmare Zone guide. First off, I want to talk about that this is just going to be talking about melee. I'm not going to be talking about range at all in this. If you guys want me to do a range guide, then I will go ahead and do that. But this one is strictly going to talk about melee, and I apologize in advance for my voice. Um, I lost my voice about a couple days ago, and it's starting to come back a little bit. So if it sounds a little bit raspy, if my voice cracks a little bit, I apologize in advance. But I want to get this guide out there for you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into this. So what do we need to get into Nightmare Zone? Well, to be honest, you only need five of the following quests. Now, there's all the quests up on the screen right now. I'm not going to go through every single one of them because there's a lot of them up there. But you only need to have five of these completed. And the reason for that is that Nightmare Zone is basically a way for you to be able to basically refight all the bosses from these quests and so in order to unlock those you have to complete the quest so as you complete other quests you start to unlock new bosses you start uh, putting more bosses into your actual nightmare zones so that's how nightmare zone actually works get five of these done you can actually start doing it something else before we get started into this potions now the points you see on screen are the amount of points you need per dose. The ones you're normally going to go for are the overloads and the absorption potions. So to get a full four dose overload potion, it's going to cost you 6k points. And for absorption potions, it's going to cost you 4k points. So if you've never done Nightmare Zone before, then you're probably going to want to just bring in some super attacks and super, or super strengths, as well as some prayer potions to kind of help you last a little bit longer. And I'll go into an actual method to utilize those. But until you actually get some points to buy some overloads and absorption potions, you're going to want to do a method like prayer and use super attacks and super strengths just to get you a starting base of points. The super ranging and super magics are obviously good if you're training magic or range in here, but this guide isn't going to be talking about that, so I'm not going to get too much into those. Again, if you are starting this off for the first time, you're not going to have the points available to buy overloads and absorptions, so go ahead and use super strengths and super attacks as well as prayer potions. The final thing before we get started into setups, each round of Nightmare Zone costs 26k without a quest cape and 16k with a quest cape. You can go ahead and take a large sum of money and put it into Dominic's Coffer, which is right near the entrance. And if you're looking for the entrance, it's right to the north of Yanil. The first setup we're going to talk about is the Dayrock method. This requires you to have 70 attack, strength, and defense, and to have at least 20,000 Nightmare Zones points to start off with. The reason for that is that you're going to spend about 6,000 of those points on an overload and you're going to spend the remaining points on absorption potions to at least start off. Obviously your run won't last very long if you have only that amount, but that's what you need to start off with this method. The reason that you're doing this method is that you manipulate the nightmare zone mechanics to get your health all the way down to one uh, when your health is at one, the absorption potions, the way they work is basically you consume an absorption potion and every piece of damage that you would take just goes into an absorb basically and so when you're at one hp the bosses can only hit you for one damage so you can manipulate that mechanic by maintaining your health at one by using the dwarven rock kick that you get from the recipe for disaster dwarf mini quest and the way you do that is that when you when your health gets above one, you right click and guzzle on the rock kick and it'll actually take you down to one. And you basically maintain that with your absorption potions. And by doing so, you'll maintain the maximum strength bonus that you get from the Darok set bonus, as well as being able to not take as much damage so your absorption potions will take, or will actually last longer as well. One thing to note is that if you are doing this for points and not experience, then one thing you're going to want in your inventory as well are a pair of ice gloves and the reason for that is that you uh some of the bosses that you keep on when you do points um, one of them is requires you to have ice gloves on so you want to have those in your inventory as well and if you are doing it for whether you're doing it for points or experience one of the best spec weapons i find is to use an ancient mace and the reason for that is that the ancient mace spec um, restores a portion of your prayer and there's actually a power up inside nightmare zone called Power Surge that I'll go over in a bit. And what that does is that consistently refills your special attack bar. So when you have that on, you can turn on Piety or Ultimate Strength, whatever you have, and then use the Ancient Mace spec over and over and over and basically fill up your prayer incredibly quick. So it's a way to make sure that you're maintaining your prayer so you can continuously use Piety. Continually, by using Piety, you'll actually increase your experience per hour. Also increase your points per hour as well because you're able to kill things faster. Now we'll talk about a method if you really don't want to pay attention all that much, this is going to be the perfect method for you. The reason that this is more AFK than the other method is that with the absorption potions, you have to keep your HP at 1 in order to get the maximum benefit out of those absorption potions. This method revolves around you using prayer. 
Now you can use prayer with Deorox as well. However, I choose not to. I like to do this method as if I was trying to save money, which is why if you look in my inventory and my equipment, I am revolving heavily around having a high prayer bonus, such as the proselyte and the nay it's not, as well as having an honor or a, um, unholy blessing in my arrow slot as well. The idea behind this method is that you go into the nightmare zone, you use a overload, and you turn on protect from melee, turn on auto retaliate, and that's it. That's pretty much all you've got to do. Walk away, do whatever, take some AFK. Obviously for this method, you want to bring in a holy wrench as well. Because you are using prayer potions, you may as well get the extra benefit of getting one extra prayer point from every dose that you take. Also bring in ancient mace as well. If you have an SGS, then bring that too, or bring that instead of the ancient mace. Personally, the reason that we use the Ancient Mace for this and the reason that I use the Ancient Mace in the other one, one, the Ancient Mace only restores prayer. It does not affect your HP in any way, shape, or form. And with the Ancient Mace spec, you can actually get well above your actual prayer level when specking. As you'll see when I actually do a run with this, you can see that I can get my prayer to well over 100. And my prayer level is 88. So that's why I usually recommend using the Ancient Mace because if you're strictly just trying to get a lot of prayer, it's perfect for it because you can spam it with that Power Surge power up and get a ton of prayer and stack your prayer to be super high. I usually end up running out of overloads before I run out of prayer potions if I do this method. So if that says anything to you, that's why I like this method for AFKing. Protect from melee and you really don't have to focus all that much. So thanks to an update quite a while ago, you have the ability to create your own custom rumble. And that's basically where you're able to select the bosses that you fight against in your nightmare zone. The reason this is such a big update is that in order for you to be able to do this before, you had to pay basically a bot that had only five quests done that that way you could actually fight the bosses that you wanted to fight. So if you were trying to go for points or if you're trying to go for experience, you had to pay for a certain bot that had certain quests done. And now thanks to the customizable rumble option, you can actually select the monsters that you want to kill. However, it is to be noted that for every boss that you deselect, the amount of points that you get per the boss actually decreases by about 5%. So in order to maximize the points, you want to try to have as many of the bosses selected as possible. And that's why if you look on the left hand side, you can see that the list that I use for bosses, this list, I did a test run of it with Derox and quite subpar gear, gear that I don't usually use, but I use for the sake of this video to give more of a realistic imitation of what you could expect. And I got about like 1.1 million points in an hour, which, you know, it's not the best. I've seen people be able to get up to 2 million. But with me using subpar gear, not using piety at all, and not trying to be efficient with it, just kind of like slightly paying attention, I was able to get about 1.1 million points, which is pretty good. Um, if you're actually paying attention, you're actually using piety, you can probably get a lot more than that. But that's those are the bosses that you want to have on those on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you got five bosses that I tend to use for experience. A nice thing about these five bosses is that they all have relatively low defenses, which makes them very easy to hit and easy to hit high on. And they also all use the same combat style, which is melee. So it makes it really easy if you're going to do the prayer method to just go in there, put on protect for melee, and not really have to pay attention. If you're using the absorption method and just going for experience, still do the same method. But basically, instead of using prayer, you'll just be using absorption as well. And it doesn't really matter the combat style of those bosses because you're going to have your HP at 1 anyway. So they're only going to be able to hit 1, and it doesn't matter what combat style they use. The last thing before we start getting into some of these runs is I want to talk about some notable bosses. This only pertains to you if you are doing this for points, and of the bosses that I listed, there are three that you should know about. The first one we're going to talk about is Camille from the Desert Treasure boss. He's the one that ice barges you like every two seconds. A couple ways you can deal with this. Put Protect from Ma Magic on, and it'll actually bring him close to you so you don't have to run very far. Basically, if you don't have Protect from Ma or Magic on, you'll have to spam run at him click like consistently until you get over to him. And then once you get over to him, you have to spam click attack him because every time he barrages you, you won't be able to attack. Also, another method to do this is if you bring a toxic blowpipe, you can actually get more hits in this way and be able to attack him faster. Another notable boss is Farid, and he is also from the Desert Treasure boss, and this is the guy that you're going to need ice gloves from. If you don't wear ice gloves, whenever you go to attack him, you'll get something in your text box saying, the boss is too hot and you drop your weapon or something along those lines. If you have ice gloves on, you'll actually be able to kill him and just attack him normally. Again, you see this guy, just put on ice gloves, attack him as normal. Not that really, not that big of a deal. Same thing with Camille. You see that guy pop up, put on protect from magic, bring him close to you and just spam click him to kill him. Another boss I want to talk about is Damus from the Desert Treasure series. 
His first form is actually very easy to kill, but his second form will drain your prayer super quick. So what you want to do is basically avoid him at all costs. Again, with your Ancient Mace, you'll be able to get your prayer back, but it's really not worth their time. Finally, the last boss I'm going to talk about is the Inadequacy, the big freaking thing from Dream Mentor. You have him up on the screen right now. If you see this thing in your point run, you go and prioritize and you kill it. This thing gives you a ton of points. It gives you the most points out of any boss and it's pretty easy to kill. So you see this thing, you run over, you stop whatever you're killing, you go kill this thing and try to spawn another one. Because you're going to see, once I kill this thing, I get a hefty amount of points. And if your entire goal of this is to get points and you want to try to kill as many of these as possible, that is going to have the biggest weight on however many points you get in a run. It's however many inadequacies you get the opportunity to kill. So again, I can't stress this enough. You see this thing, you need to run over, drop whatever it is you're doing, and kill it as fast as you can. All right, so you've got all your gear together. You got your setup ready, got your inventory ready. If you're doing Darox, first thing you want to do is guzzle your rock cake until you get to 51 HP. Get to 51 HP if you are using overloads. The reason for that is that when you drink an overload, it will immediately take five, 10 hits from you. So it'll hit you 10, or it'll hit you five times for 10 damage. So if you have 51 HP, it'll drop you to one. You can have absorption potions on and do this at the same time. So if you want to, you can do this inside the actual arena. Drink your absorption potions while your overload is ticking so that way there's no possible way you could die in some random freak accident. But then once you've gotten your hit points of 51, go ahead and select the bosses for what you want to do. So if that's for an experience run or if that's for a point run, select the bosses that you need to. Once you've done that, you're going to hit accept. If you have quest cape, this is going to cost you 16,000 GP. If you don't have quest cape, it's going to cost you 26,000 GP. And if you're looking for a spot to put that in, there's a little money bag right next to uh, the guy that you start this with. I think his name is Dominic. So you put some money in there. And then every time you go to start a dream, you'll talk to Dominic, start the dream, and he'll take some money out of that coffer for you. Once you get inside, again, drink your overload to get down to 50 or to get down to one. Drink some absorptions. And then pretty much you're just going to wait and attack things. That's all you've really got to do. If you're going to use piety, then flick on piety. But with the absorption method, that's all you really got to do. When your health starts to get above one, you can right click on the dwarven rock cake and click guzzle. And it'll take one HP away from you. It'll take you down to one HP to make sure you're maintaining that maximum strength bonus. Another thing you can do is you can actually flick on the prayer rapid heal every minute or so and what this will do is actually reset the health regeneration timer so you don't have to actually guzzle the rock cake you can just flick on the rapid heal prayer and what it'll do is uh, reset that timer so it consistently tries to regenerate and it isn't able to and that's another way to kind of cheese the mechanic to actually stay at one hp other than that that's pretty much all you're going to do so pretty much i'm just going to speed up this clip and whatever's left you're just going to see me kill everything now let's say you don't want to pay attention, like me most of the time. So you're going to do the same thing that you did before, but instead of Darox, you're going to have your prayer gear on. You're going to run in, drink your overload, and then wait for the monsters to spawn. They take about mm, 30 seconds or so, and then they start spawning. Um, a good thing to note is that you want to stand kind of close to the middle of the wall on the eastern side. The reason for this is that it's going to actually attract more monsters to you. And generate faster spawns. I'm not sure if this is a myth or not, but from what I was reading around, this is what most people tend to do. So I'm throwing it in there. If you don't find results with it, I'm sorry. Just stand in the middle then. Um, I think the if you stand on the eastern wall, you actually get more spawns that way, or you get closer spawns, so you get faster experience. Again, not entirely sure on that if it's a myth or not. So again, just turn on melee, chill. Um, when you start running out of prayer, use your ancient mace spec to gain back some prayer. And then you'll see in this you'll see in this clip that there's actually a power surge spawn or power up that spawns. I run and grab it, and then you just spam your ancient mace spec with piety on to try to get as much prayer back as you can, so that way you're not using prayer potions. And that's really all the clicking you gotta do. Other than that, you can just sit there in AFK with protect from melee, protect from melee on, and just chill out, go watch the movie, go play League, go play Hearthstone, go make dinner, whatever you want to do. That's the joy of Nightmare Zone. Also, one thing I want to note, this is probably going to be the method you're going to use to get your initial Nightmare Zone points so you can actually do absorptions and overloads. So buy at least like 5 or 10 prayer potions and just do a run real quick with some super attacks and super strengths. That way you can at least get a good base of points so you can buy a 
basically a full inventory of what you need to do a full run of Nightmare Zone with absorptions and overloads. At the very least, get overloads. That way, if you still want to do prayer so you can AFK, you've at least got the overloads, which will give you the most melee boost possible, so you're not wasting super attacks and super strengths. Finally, let's talk about some other reasons you would do Nightmare Zone besides the experience you can get. And the reason that you want to get points is for the rewards. Most of the rewards people go for are typically the imbues, and the reason people go for the imbues is that if you imbue any of the rings, like your Berserker ring, Warrior's ring, Archer's ring, etc., it actually doubles the benefit of them, so it's very handy for those, so your Berserker ring actually gives you plus 8 strength bonus, Seer's ring plus 8 magic, Archer ring plus 8 range, you get the point. The reason that you would want to imbue like your Crystal Gear is that Crystal Gear, naturally, as it degrades, loses its damage. So if you imbue... A crystal weaponry, whether it's a halberd, bow, shield, it will actually maintain its full damage bonus as it degrades. So that's very handy as well. And the other thing that most people are going to want to imbue is the Slayer Helmet and the Black Mask. The reason for that is that it gives you the plus bonus that you normally get from a Black Mask on a Slayer task. It gives you that bonus as well if you're using Ranger Magic. So basically it allows you to train all forms of combat when doing Slayer. And that's why it's usually the first imbue people go after and it's the most expensive because it has the highest impact overall because it's impacting Slayer as a whole as well as allowing you to train with the Slayer Helmet in multiple paths. The other things that you can go for are Herb Boxes, Flax, Pure Essence, Rune Essence, things like that. And typically if you have excess points after you've done all your imbues, the best thing to go for is to do Herb Boxes. However, you can only get 15 of these a day. So if you have a huge surplus of points, then you want to be buying your herb boxes every day. Don't try to dump them all on one particular item. Just take your time and buy them 15 at a time over a day. That will result in basically getting one GP per uh, point that you have. So if you have like a million points, it generally equals out to being about 1 million points will equal 1 million GP. If you spend all that, all those points on buying herb boxes when you can every day. So that's gonna be your typical way you wanna spend your rewards. Usually prioritize your imbues first and then start buying things like herb boxes, flax, those kind of things. Also scroll of redirections are a huge thing to focus on as well. They're the, these are the only place you can get it from is from Nightmare Zone and it actually allows you to change where the teleport to house tabs go. And what you can use is you can use a scroll of redirection on a teleport to house tab and you can choose for that to be redirected to any of the house portals as well as changing it to the Trollheim teleport as well, which is very handy. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our Nightmare Zone guide. I hope you guys found this guide helpful. And if you did, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more of the content from my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any comments for me or any feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. If there's anything I didn't leave out, please go ahead and leave it in the description. I'm sure there's a ton of things I forgot because it doesn't matter what kind of guide you make on YouTube. If you forgot something because there's always something else out there. But if there's something super important, go ahead and leave it in the comments. And if I deem it's important for everyone else, then I'll go ahead and pin it so that way everyone can see at the top of the comment section. Other than that, my CC will be in the description as well as my Twitch and my Discord link. So if you guys want to join any of those, feel free to. And with that all being said, you guys have a great night, morning, evening, whatever time of day it is. And I apologize for my voice once again. And y'all take it easy. I'll see you guys in the next one.